Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And this short video is going to be the culmination of this series of short videos. It's our seventh video in this particular series. Uh, I suppose our eighth video when we, when we include the overview video. Uh, and this one is going to bring together all of the types of probability calculations, well, a number of the types of probability calculations that we've done up to this particular moment in time. And this particular probability calculation that we're going to calculate uh, we have called type type 7 probabilities okay and they're probabilities where we want to calculate the probability of a z score being bound below by a particular x value and being bound above by a particular x value let's call these x1 and x2 but where x1 is negative and x2 is a positive value so with respect to the standard normal variable let's draw our standard normal curve so our standard normal curve is centered on zero the horizontal axis represents our z variable or the z axis and our x1 value is a negative value so that's over here let's call that x1 and our x2 value is a positive value which is over here and we're interested in the probability of a z score being between those two values so we're interested in the calculation of the area between those two values here okay so let's have a look at a particular example. So say if we want to calculate the probability of observing a z-score that's greater than minus 1.39 and less than, let's say, 2.65 as an example. So we know the first thing that we'll always do is we draw the standard normal curve for the z variable. And the standard normal curve is a bell-shaped curve centered on zero. The horizontal axis represents our z-values or our z-axis. Minus 1.39 is going to be over here, and 2.65 is going to be over here. Okay? We want the probability of observing a z-score between these two values, so we're interested in what is the area between these two values here. Okay, we're going to do this in stages. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look up our positive values because we can always look up our positive values. And the positive value in this case that we're interested in is 2.65. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Z tables, okay, and we're going to look up 2.65, so that means we're going to look up the first significant digit, okay, and the first decimal digit, which is 2.60, and the second decimal digit in this case is 5, so we're going to come across to the column as 0 0.05. So let's say we go across there to that column, and we're going to triangulate in until we get that value. So we're going to look up 2.65 on our tables. We come down to 2.65. We come down to 2.6 in the first column. 2.6. And we come across to the column labeled 0 0.05. Okay. Which gives us a value of 0 0.9960. So this value here is 0 0.9960. Brilliant. So what we know now is that when we look up 2.65 on the tables, that gives us the area to the left-hand side of 2.65, which is the area from here down to negative infinity, which is 0 0.9960. Oh, okay, bring it. So we're nearly there. Okay. Now let's think about this here uh, from a from a problem-solving perspective. We only want the area in between these two values. Yeah? Now we know the area from 2.65 down to negative infinity and if we knew the area from minus 1.39 down, okay, if we knew the area, the area let's say in the tail here, okay, okay, well then all we do is we take the shorter line away from the longer line which gives us the area in between. Okay, so actually, ultimately, to solve this problem, okay, all we need to do is figure out now the area in the left tail. So let's just concentrate on the area in the left tail. So the area in the left tail here, let's draw the curve, the area in the left, so let's say the left tail area, the left tail area, okay, it looks something like this. Okay, so it's a curve, okay. It's centered on zero, the horizontal axis is the z-axis, and the tail area is bounded above by minus 1.39. Okay, so minus 1.39 is here. Okay, and we're interested in the area in this tail here. Okay. Now we can never look up negative values, but what we can always do is we can always rotate. Yeah. So when we rotate this curve or flip the curve, okay, 
the negative minus 1.39 goes to 1.39. Okay, that's the z-axis here. And the tail area on the left becomes the tail area on the right. Okay, so the question is, can you tell me the area in the right-hand tail that's above 1.39? Well, what we could always do is we could always look up 1.39 on the tables. So when we look up 1.39, we're going to come down to 1.30, and we're going to come across to 0 0.09. When we do that here and triangulate, that gives us a value. So 1.39, we're going to come down to 1.3, and we're going to come across to the column labeled 9, which gives us a value of 0 0.9177. So this is 0 0.9177. Let's just think about that value here for a moment. So when we looked up 1.39, we got a value of 0 0.9177. Well, that's the area to the left-hand side of 1.39. So this value here is 0 0.9177. Now, what we know from the characteristics of the standard curve is that the total area under the curve is equal to 1 unit. Okay. So if we take the shorter line away from the longer line, what we're left with is the area over here. Okay. In other words, 1 minus the shorter line, which is 0 0.9177, gives us the area in the right-hand tail. So let's do that on our calculator. So what we have is, we have, oh, let me just go into mode here. Oh, second degree mode. Okay. So what we have is 1 minus 0 0.9177 gives us a value of 0 0.0823. In other words, the area in the right-hand tail above 1.39 is 0 0.0823. With true rotation, that's the same as the area to the left-hand side or below minus 1.39, which is exactly the area that we require up here for our probability. Yeah. So this area to the left-hand side is 0 0.0823. So this is 0 0.0823. That was the unknown earlier on. So once again, if we take the shorter line away from the longer line, we end up with the area between. So the longer line is 0 0.9960, and we're going to take away the shorter line, which is 0 0.0823. And when we do that on our calculator, we have 0 0.9960, oh, 0 0.9960 minus 0 0.0823 to give us a value of 0 0.9137. And this is the important value here for us. So what we have now is, and I'll just write that down here, is that the probability of observing a z-score that's greater than minus 1.39 and less than 2.65 is equal to the area between those two points here, which is 0 0.9137. Okay guys, thanks very much for your time. Uh, that concludes this particular short video on how to calculate what we've called type 7 probabilities, which is how to calculate the probability or, or the probability of observing a z-score that's bounded below by a negative value and bounded above by a positive value. And what we know that we always do, like for example in this situation, is we'll always look up our positive value and what will be unknown then is the tail area and to calculate the tail area we'll do a rotation and just remember that we're calculating a tail area anytime you want to calculate an area in a tail you always have to subtract from one in this case it gives us 0 0.0823 which is our left tail area take the shorter line from the longer line to give us the area in between which is the probability that we require Okay guys, thanks very much for your time. Uh, I'm Jonathan Lambert uh, with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Okay, thank you.